Hello and welcome to video number 32 in the Mega Man series. In this video we're going to be creating the stage select screen. So I'm going to take a look at each level one by one or each stage. So let's start with Cutman. So this is the original. So I'm going to be bouncing between these. So now we're going to take a look at our version. You can see we can move between them by using the arrow keys left and right. I'm going to press enter. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the next one, which is going to be Gutsman. Okay, let's look at this one. Okay. Next is going to be Iceman. And then my Iceman. Okay. And then next will be Bomb Man. So now my Bomb Man. Then it will be Fireman. Next will be the Lek Man, which will actually be the last one in this video. So now we're going to take a look at Dr. Wiley. So Dr. Wiley's got, he's a little special because after he's done showing his points, he actually has an exit animation, which we're seeing right now. So now we're going to go take a look at my my Dr. Wiley. So be able to do that. We got to say that all these stages have been completed because that's how you get to Dr. Wiley. So you'll notice that the stage select text is gone, and now you got Dr. Wiley in the middle. And then every stage is completed. It's basically a black block instead of a yellow block. So now I'm going to select Dr. Wiley. And he flies on. And so that is the end of the stage select intro. Um, so we're going to be building that today. It's actually a really big project. I'm not going to really go over too much of, you know, this goes here, that goes there or anything, because you're going to basically end up downloading the scene unless you really want to build it from scratch so you can look at the um, inspector values and stuff like that. 
but we're going to be switching over to the previous project. So let's get started. Okay, we're back. So um, if you've been following along, open up your project. The last one we worked on was the actual the game over screen. And in this one, since we're going to be doing stage select, um, it kind of goes hand in hand because the um, when you do the, there's an option on the game over screen that you select the stage select and it should go to that screen. So they kind of go next to each other. That's why I picked this project to be next. So if you've been following along, open up yours. If you haven't, um, there's a link in my description to my GitHub. All the projects for this video series are up there and with all the code and all the assets and everything. So there's um, some new assets that are going to be put into this project, uh, a lot of um, new images and a couple sound files. So you might want to go download those and we're going to get to those first. So I'm going to get that out of the way. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to see what the differences are. So previous project against the project that we're going to be doing. So all this green is basically new stuff. So you can see there's a whole lot of new, that's a lot of green. Um, we're going to be making a change to the bomb man controller because we're adding in a new animation for him the intro animation and Then we're gonna have all these enemies um, Cut man dr. Wiley, etc And then down here these are the audio files so you can go find those in audio music and go get the boss select mp3 and the stage select mp3 and down here um, The original audio files we have there is one already for um, Dr. Wiley's ship, which is number 31. However, all these MP3s, they have um, some dead silence at the end. So the Wiley ship sound continuously loops. So with that sound, it does that silence, it doesn't make it sound right. So what I ended up doing is I cut out that silence and I have a new one here that's um, basically the loop version. So you can go download that, wileyship.wave. And then we have all these new images that are gonna be imported, Cutman, Dr. Wiley, etc and the stage select one, which is actually the blocks that each um, character sits in. And then I have this one here called waypoint, which is just a little circle PNG. And those waypoints basically going to be used to see where the points for the ship flight path are going to be. And it's only for, um, it's only for development. It's not actually part of the actual um, end project, but this is so we can see where the points are. And then there's a change in the game manager prefab. And then these are all the scenes. So I have an empty scene for each one of the, the bosses. So when you, the animation of the intro is done playing, it actually goes into that, um, that boss's scene. So right now these are basically just a bunch of placeholders that have nothing in them. And then we have the actual um, code file for the stage select. And then we have some changes that are inside the game manager. And we actually also have a new material that's gonna be used on our Mega Man font. So you'll notice that um, the Mega Man font has a, a background or you can say like a shadow or an underlay, which is like a black. So it's kind of makes it a little stand out. But then there's also the time that the font is used and there is no black um, outline on the back of it. So I had to create a new material for that, which is I called no no uh, no underlay. So this is when this is used, then there's no black background on that, so it doesn't stand out. So you notice in the intro animation where it says clear points and it has the boss's name. There's no outline on that, but the points there is. So create a new material to um, take care of that. So first thing we'll do is we're going to just start at the game manager down here and see what the changes are. So what I ended up doing, um, because the asset palette has the points tally in it, which was used when we did the, the boss fights video, um, I have the, the loop sound created in there for the point tally. Well, that's stored in the asset palette, which is basically tied to the game manager. So to be able to access that, so we don't have to end up recreating that same sound loop over somewhere else, I ended up just making this um, asset palette a public so I can be accessed through the game manager if you need it for some, from somewhere else. So we're gonna, I ended up moving it a little bit below so that line, I'm gonna delete that. And then here it is, so now it's public. 
And then what I also did here in the game scenes, we added some more scenes here. We got the Cut Man stage, Guts Man stage, all the way up through Wiley 1 through 4. So we're going to add in all those stages. And then I also have a stage list here, which is the, the boss. So we're going to add that in there, along with there's a structure here. Um, this is how I'm going to be, we're going to keep track of which scenes or which levels have been completed. So it's called Stage Destruct. Um, we're going to have the scene, which is from up here, and then it's going to have a bool here that it's completed or not. So we can see, we can keep track of our scenes, whether we've defeated them or not. And so we're going to sum that over. Then down here, so what I ended up doing was we have this loop for main scene. Well, the loop for the code for the loop of the main scene, like with the player ready, etc., it really applies to all of our scenes that have to do with like um, the boss, you know, the boss levels. So I ended up renaming it to player level scene, start player level scene, and so it's no longer a main scene. So it's not going to be specifically just for the main scene. It's going to be able to be used on all these scenes since it's all the same logic behind, you know, the scene starting up, etc. So we're going to send that over, and same thing for down here on the uh, update loop. And then we're going to rename the function, and then rename that function. And then I have this new public function in here, um, which is called set level completed. You're going to pass it to stage, and once you, and then it'll basically set that as true. So you basically would call this at the end once the um, the weapon part is collected and that part of the scene when the boss has been defeated, you want to basically set that scene to be that stage to be completed so that when you get back to the level select, then it'll show the black version of that block instead of the yellow version showing because the black version basically means that the level's been done. So we're going to sum that over and now that's the same. Save that. And then let's see which what else we have. It's blue here. Yeah. Prefab, so let's see the prefab. So in the game manager prefab, basically now that that game struct, the game stage structure is in there, I assigned all the um, stage lists and then they have the other completed flags. So I'm just going to send that over. And because we edited it, it has the player lives from the last video, so we're going to send that over. So we'll check out, we'll check out those changes afterwards. And down here, now the stage select. This has got a whole bunch of stuff, so I think the easiest thing to do with this would be to copy everything and just overwrite what's over there instead of deleting the scene and just re-putting it back in there. I don't want it to do that. So now that's done. So the rest of this is all new stuff except for up here. Bond Man Controller has some changes, which basically is adding this intro anim. So we're just going to send those changes over. So now everything is new. So Bomb Man's intro, we're going to send that over. And then we have all of these animations for all these guys. So we're just going to hold send all that over. Oops. Here. And send all those over. And then we have the music, which we'll send over. And then the wave file for the ship. And then the, all these images with the cutouts. Which we'll go over and then the stage select one and then the waypoint file and then all these stages in the meta and then the C sharp file for the actual stage select and the material for the font. There we go. So that should be everything. So now we're going to go back over to this, let it pull in all the differences. Let's 
that. All right, so I think the first thing we'll do is we're going to go over to the scene and open that up. So the um, scene didn't load right when I tried to open it, so I ended up closing Unity and opening it back up, and now it appear now it's okay. Like the background was missing and stuff, so closing Unity and reopening it um, should get everything to load right. If you made any difference changes and stuff like that, so let us start with the graphics. So we're gonna go over to the graphics and actually, you know, audio real quick. So music, we have the the boss select. Which we use for that scene and the stage select, which is basically a loop. This loops. So we have those two. And then under the sounds we have the the Wiley ship sound. And that basically is a loop. And now the graphics. So in the graphics we have the waypoint, which is basically just a circle. And then I can apply whatever color I want to it so I can um, use it in my scene. So instead of a gizmo, I basically use this for my waypoints um, so that I can see them um, because it's on a canvas. So that's basically just set it to point, no filter, no compression, and all the defaults on it. It's just a single, so nothing special about that. And then what we have next is all of our enemies. But before we do the enemies, let's take a look at the stage select. So stage select is going to be set to multiple point, no filter, no compression. And then if we open this up, and I'm just going to switch it over to this so you can actually see what's going on here. So basically there's four cells or four blocks for each enemy, um, except for Dr. Wiley. So it's basically, I'm using the... Um, the name that's already on there instead of using a string um, through the text mesh so just keep it easy however I don't use the um, image for the select stage press start because I do use text mesh for that because if I was to adapt this to mobile I want to be able to say I don't have a start button on my phone or maybe I don't I don't have a start button on my keyboard either so I press enter Something. I can say whatever I want here. So I just matched up the text mesh font size to match this and used um, the mono spacing and we just set the color. And so it's basically just like using, you can't really tell, but this is blue and this is white. It's the same thing. And it basically um, alternates between those two colors. And in here we have the block where the um, enemy is not selected, where they're not the currently selected enemy. And then you have the white one where it's going to flash between them. Now the yellow signifies that the bot, the level has not been completed yet, where the black means it does it has been completed. So all I did with these is I just say cut man one, cut man two, cut man three, cut man four, all the way. Same thing for guts man. And if you want to get these, you can basically pause, get the, um, the layout positions. Everything's basically centered because these are all canvas elements. So and then ice man. And then you got bomb mans, and you have fireman, elect man, and then Dr. Wiley. Now the original sprite that had Dr. Wiley in it, which I got off the spider's resource, it actually has Dr. Wiley's picture in here. So I just yellowed him out so it's just like the rest of these. And all the characters are their own sprites and they actually sit in the position on here where they're going to be shown and they're locked. So we'll get to that. And so Dr. Wiley has the the blue and the white version, you can't see it underneath of there. And then you have the white version of Dr. Wiley. So that's all there is to the stage select image. So you just basically, these are all cut out and you're going to use them for the stage select screen. Now we're going to look at the enemies. So Bomb Man, um, Bomb Man's the same as Bomb Man was when we did it the first time. So here you have all these, um, he uses this image, this image, and this jump image. So those are the only images that are part of his intro animation. So when he's sitting in his block, not doing anything until he's selected, he's using this image. Then he jumps with this image, and then he'll basically sit there with this image, throw the bomb up, 
and it'll switch to this, and then when he catches it, it'll switch back to that. So that's the same. Now cut man and the rest of these guys, these are all new. So we're gonna go to cut man. Now all these are multiple. I'm not gonna so all these um, graphics are all multiple, they're all point no filter, and they're all no compression. So in here with Cutman, all I have are the first three. So if you watch the video or play the game, you'll see that only these three are part of his intro animation. So this is when he's sitting in the cell, he'll jump out of the cell and then alternates between these to show, you know, he's you know, flexing or whatever, he's, you know, angry, he's gonna beat up Mega Man. And so this one I just call the idle and uh, I use like um, custom positions for the pivots and then that one I call pose and then that one's the jump. So the next one is going to be, we'll skip Dr. Wiley, we'll come back to him last. So then we have Elecman and Elecman he only has four. So I only have four frames for this guy. And the first two, so this is when he's sitting in the cell, he jumps out of the cell, and then we have these two. So he has his arm up, throws his arm out, throws, so it's a little animation between this, this, and this. And then we're gonna go look at Fireman. Fireman, he has, he has six in here that we use. So starts with him in the cell, he jumps out of the cell, and these are basically the same, except you're gonna see his flame is a little different, so that's an animation for his fire. And over here, he has his other animation, so we have that animation, or that frame, that frame, that frame, and then we have this frame, the first pose, the second pose, and the third pose. And these are basically the same, except the flame alternates, so it makes his flame has an animation. And then we have Gutsman. Uh, Gutsman has four that we use for his intro. We have the one where he's sitting in the cell, or standing in the cell. And this is also, these are basically, he's um, kind of laughing at the end of his animation, so it alternates between these two, where he's kind of chuckling and shoulder shrugging. And when he jumps, this is, he jumps out of his um, cell, and this is the first, this is like the initial jump, and then it switches over to this jump where his legs are out a little bit. And then when he lands, it goes to this. And then it switches over to these two. So that's the first one. So that's idle. That's the pose. We're gonna say jump one, jump two. And that's it. And then Iceman. Iceman has, I believe, just four. Yeah, so he only has four as well. So this is when he's standing in the cell, he jumps out of his cell, and then when he lands, he basically throws his arm up and throws it all the way up. So that one's the idle, that one is the jump, and then I just call that one pose one, and then I call that one pose two. And then we have now finally Dr. Wiley. Dr. Wiley's sprite sheet's really big. So. We don't use all of it. So for Dr. Wiley, um, only use these first three for him. And then I have these three of the spaceship and these are um, part of his secondary animation. So this spaceship part's all secondary animation, the exit animation. So starting at the top here, when he is in his cell, it's this image here and I call it idle, and then you're going to notice these look the same except however his eyebrow is raised here. And if you step through the animation, you'll actually see it starts here, when he jumps out it switches to this, and then when it switches between his arm up and arm down, because you'll see his arm up, his eyebrow is down. So it switches between these two, that's why I end up naming that one pose one and pose two. So we have pose one, idle, and pose two. And then we have a secondary animation that has to do with the UFO. So there's only three frames of the UFO, and you're going to see that this part here is what's animated. So this one's the first part. So I just call it Dr. Wiley Ship One. And I have all the pivots down in the bottom center. And then you got Ship Two and Ship Three. 
And then on this one is basically just the top and the bottom. Now I don't end up actually using the bottom because if you wanted to actually try and animate Dr. Wily with him moving him up and down to get into his ship, then yeah, by all means, go ahead, you can use this, but that's way too much of a pain, in my opinion. So I just cut it out, it's part of the scene, but it never gets used, it just stays hidden the whole time. However, I do use the top, because when he his ship lands and his top basically comes up so he can climb into his ship. So we have the ship top, and that's the pivot bottom center, and if you want to use the ship bottom, there's the, um, the X, Y, and width and the height for it, and the pivot bottom center. And now, for the second part, this is when he loads into the ship. So this is the first part. Um, so these are just, I don't include the top, because I have the top separate, and that's just going to be moved through an animation, or through um, a move towards. And so we're just going to, basically the animation just plays these frames one after another. So we're going to start with this, and there are eight of them, I believe. Yeah, so loading number eight. So first one, those dimensions, all the pivots are bottom center. So loading one, loading two. And you can see I have a gap up here just to keep everything the same height. And because of one of these, this one, I believe, this one here, that's where the top, that's as high as he gets with his head. So that's why they're all the same height, because that's the tallest one. So loading one, loading two, loading three, loading four, loading five, loading six, loading seven, and loading eight. And then after he loads in, then as his is the top of his UFO starts coming in to close on him, it basically plays this animation, which is his eyebrow raised and his eyebrow not raised. So it looks like he's winking or blinking or squinting or what do you want to call it? So we have blinking one, I call it blinking. Blinking one and blinking two. And same thing, if it's bottom center. So that's Dr. Wiley. Those are all the frames that have to do with Dr. Wiley. So now that we have all the graphics that we're using, which I don't believe I missed any, then we have the animations themselves. So what I ended up doing was inside of the enemies folder, I already had a bosses folder that had to do with bomb man. So I just created folders for each of these guys and to put all of their animations in there. So we're just gonna start with bomb man. So Bomb Man already had all these, except for intro. Intro is new. So Bomb Man's intro, we just brought in all these frames that Eric already kind of explained. So the intro I set to samples to four. There's no loop on it. It starts with that frame. And then that's when he's in a cell. It switches to that. He jumps out of a cell. And then when he lands, he basically lands with his arm down. He gets a bomb on his hand. And then he throws the bomb up and switches to this. And then when the bomb lands in his hand, it switches back down. So this is Bomb Man's um, animation. And so all we did was just add a new one. So uh, the intro, it's still gonna default to idle, but the intro was added in there. Next one's Cut Man. So Cut Man has only one animation in there for now. If we were to build them out, so we'll add to it. And right now, so it's Cut Man intro. His intro is actually 16 frames. Um, I put the sample rate at eight. Um, so that's when he's in his cell. This is when he jumps out. And then basically these two is like seven times. So if you actually watch it and step through it, he does this, this pair seven times. So, and there's no loop on this. So it stops here at the end. So it'll play these one by one. And so that's Cut Man's intro. We'll come back to Dr. Wiley. Elect Man. Black man is same thing. Got the intro, and then you have the actual animation. So in his animation, I have six frames in it. So this is when he's in a cell. This is when he jumps out of the cell, and when he lands, he's got. His, I'll have him with his arm up, and then it goes to this up, and then out again. So and I actually the um the actual game. I think they just play it all together. So there's like no pause between them. However, what I end up doing just to do a little creative liberty, I have it play this, then I have a slight delay, and then it plays this out. So it's kind of, I don't know, 
I think it makes it gives it a little pizzazz. Next one we have is Fireman. So Fireman, only the one animation, which is the intro. So it starts with him in his cell. He jumps out of a cell, and then it just plays the sequence out. So it just plays a one by one. And then the next one is Gutsman, which only has the one animation, which is the intro. And it starts with him in a cell, and then he jumps out of the cell. So this is the initial jump with his legs up, and then it switches to this at a certain time with his legs down as he's coming down. And then when he lands, it's got his legs up again, and it goes between his chuckle and his shoulder shrug. So he's like laughing. He's laughing like Mega Man's going to beat him up or something. Then we have Iceman, which only has one, which is also the intro. And he only has four frames in this, so it starts with him in a cell. He jumps out of a cell. Well, this is a sample read, too. I should, didn't mention it in the others. I should have. But, so he's in a cell. He jumps out of a cell. When he, when he lands, he has his arm halfway up, and then he has his arm all the way up. So that's all for Iceman. Now, Dr. Wily, he's got two different animator controllers, one for him and one for his ship, and he's got four different animations in here. So we're going to start with Dr. Wily himself, which is just the intro. In the intro, it starts here with him in his cell. He jumps out of his cell. Then after he lands, um, basically it stays on that. And then in the secondary part of his animation, then he just plays this in a loop where he basically th throws his arm up three times to hail his ship and it stops here. And in the ship, which actually has these three animations in it, we just default to the animated ship, Wily ship, and we have his loading one and his blinking. In the Wily ship, it just has the three frames, the one, two, and three. This one is set to loop, so it will loop. And for, I set the sample rate to six. In his blinking, actually we'll do the loading because that's technically before the blinking. And the blinking of the sample rate set to six. There is no loop on this because when it gets to the end, we let it sit there. And then, so this is basically one through eight. So frame one, frame two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And when it gets to the end of that, then it switches to his blinking because this one is in a loop. We need it to keep looping. So this one's also set to his frame rate of six or sample rate of six, and it's got blink one and blink two, and it just loops. And as it's looping, he's blinking. We have a, the um, top part of his UFO coming back down to close him in. And so that is basically all of the animations. So now with all the animations out of the way, we don't have to talk about those anymore. We're actually gonna talk about the scene itself and how that was constructed. So let me get that out of the way actually real quick. So with the scene itself, um, we have a game object in here called Stage Select. And if you watch all the other videos, I have a, I basically create a um, game object with the same name as a scene where I can attach the actual script that has to do with the um, scene itself. So this has actually got a whole lot of stuff in it, um, which we'll go when we get to the code, we'll talk about it. But this has to do with the scene settings. So we have the enemy selection, which enemy number we select. So it's all basically zero-based index, um, so we know which one we pick. The block flash delay. So this is the time between flashing on the uh, the blue and the white. And then you got the white text uh, or the white screen flash. So after you pick the enemy, you'll see that it flashed white. It was going on and off. So this is the time I use in between that. And then you'll see when you um, when it starts playing the enemy name and the clear points, each letter starts typing out like like a typewriter. So this is the delay between each character. And this move speed I don't use anymore technically. I use it for the UFO, um, but it's not this actual value. Um, this is actually the second version of the stage select that I wrote. The first one I did it completely as canvas on as an overlay, and that proved to be very difficult with trying to get physics to work with the um, the enemies and stuff and it, I was using waypoints for everything and it did not it didn't work out that great so I ended up redoing it for the most part and what I ended up doing was uh, game objects are now separate that's why 
we get to the camera, you're going to see what I used for the camera, or the canvas, I mean. And so this animation speed is only going to be used for the, um, the spaceship, and it gets overridden, so to ignore this 200, but the variable is used. And then the jump landing position Y, so when they launch out, they're going to land at negative 16 on the canvas. So you're going to see with all the enemies, I don't check for physics or anything like that. I just basically launch them with vectors, and when they get to this negative 16 position, that's when they stop moving, and I lock them back on the screen. So these are the audio clips. We get the stage select, the boss select, the widely ship loop, and then the menu select. So this is when you're pressing in between um, your left right between each of the enemies. And then the game start when you press the enter, the, that sound. And these are the objects that are part of seeing the bomb, the ship, this group, um, which I toggle on and off, the top part of the ship, which I do use, the bottom part, which I don't use, the blue bar. So once you pick an enemy, there's a blue bar that pops up on, in the scene. And the white flash, which basically is the full screen, and it flashes on and off. And then we have the enemies. So these are all the characters. There's seven of them. So these are all the game objects for each of these guys. Cutman, Gutsman, etc. And then the blocks themselves. So, And then we have the blocks that are blue and active. Which are, the active basically means it's got the yellow background, which means that they haven't been, um, the, bot, the level hasn't been completed yet. And then the active white if it's selected. So the yellow background white border or trim. And then you have the inactive, which is basically the black. So it's all the same thing. So if you're looking at the sprite sheet, you had like Cutman 1, Cutman 2, Cutman 3, Cutman 4. So this would be like Cutman 1, Cutman 2's graphic, Cutman 3, Cutman 4 graphic. So I don't know if we can. Can't really, you can't see it. Actually, yeah, there. So you can actually click on it and see it. And then. So those are basically just um, references to each of the um, graphics. And then down here we have the ship for the, the waypoints for the ship, which we'll get to when we talk about the ship. But these are basically just transforms of where the point is on um, that we want the ship to follow. There's um, five of them. So it's on the far left of the screen, then it stops in the middle, then goes down, then goes back up, and then exits. And then this is the string format for the select stage. Um, this is a um, format, this is a placeholder for the size of the font, and then this is a placeholder for the color of the fonts, because we're going to switch between these two hex colors, which you got pure white, and then got that blue. So it's going to fill this in, and the fonts should be remaining the same. And then you have the clear point message. So I handle, okay, up here I have the handle to the text mesh pro, the select text, which is this. That's the string that goes into that. And then you got this string that'll go into the clear points. So this is like the enemy name, etc. The clear points. And then you got the tally text, which is basically the points. And that's that. So then we have the camera. Now, all the other projects have been using 1.5 for the size. Well, in this case, I changed it to 1.2. And the reason I'm doing that is because in the final one we're going to be using the tile map to actually build out bomb man's level and to make it the same size and everything aspect ratio and everything proportionate i had to use 1.2 and to um for the projection so that the tile map would fit within the screen on 4.3 the right size however there's still going to be black borders because when you actually check out the game um, the tile map there's 16 by 16 blocks, and there's actually 16 of them, I believe, that go that are horizontal, and 15 of them that are vertical. So it actually comes out to be 256 by 240, which is a really weird aspect ratio because that actually comes out to 1.0666667 or something like that. At least I think it, I think it's that, but it doesn't come out to 43 exact. So that's why there's going to be some black borders on the left and the right side of the screen. But when we get to that video, we'll talk about that. So I just ended up using 1.2 on this because I don't have to redo stuff. Because to get the characters to jump and land in their spots the way that I want, if you alter this or you alter the aspect ratio, um, all everything's going to look, it's not going to line up anymore. So 
any that's why I was going to end up using this. And right now I have this set for 16.9, but I'm going to end up redoing the velocities on these guys and changing it to 4.3. So, but we're going to keep it for 16.9 in this video. And game manager. So the game manager, this is what's new. We have the cut man stage. Um, and this is the completed flag. So if we call that public function, we can set this to completed. So if this is checked off when we play the scene, it'll show Cutman having the black background. So it shows that his stage is complete. And it, what the code will do is if it checks in all these, all the way up through Electman, because we have all these. So you got Cutman, Gutsman, Iceman, Bombman, Fireman, and Electman. If, these all, if all six of these happen to be checked, then that's when Dr. Wiley gets shown. So that's what the script for the stage select looks for. So that's what this um, that structure that we created has to do with, and um, all those um, enum lists for the stages and all that. So now the actual canvas itself. So let's move this over, and let's bring this in now. So I'm going to bring this in. Let's just shrink this up for right now. Okay, so I ended up using screen paint space camera because I have a mix of overlay elements and a mix of actual game objects because these guys actually will be using physics to get them to move to where I want them to move. So I have a, it's kind of like a hybrid canvas and it's point using the main camera. And this is all nothing new. Scale with screen size 800 by 600. But when I switch it in the last video, for um, our special resolution, this is I'm going to end up changing these. So, but right now this is fine for this video and 69 resolution so, or 69 aspect ratio. So that's basically the canvas um, settings. Now we have all these pieces that basically compose this entire layout. So we have the background. Background is just a image and it's set to that blue. So this is just an image and it's got this blue on it. So that's constant. That's constant to the um, scene. So that's always gonna be there. And it's basically stretched out. So whatever size you, you basically adjust itself to fit. And then we have the blue bar. The blue bar is that blue bar, as soon as you select the enemy, the blue bar shows up. So that is a image as well with a, it's a darker set of blue and I also have a canvas group on it so I can control the alpha on it so I can turn it on and off. So there's the blue bar I, and then I can turn it back off. Then we have the white flash. The white flash is when you also select the enemy and it flashes a few times. I don't remember, I think it's like five times. It flashes five times as the enemy is progressing through their animation. And that's the same deal. It's just basically using an image that's all white and it's also got a canvas group and this is turned the wrong way and then it basically flashes and you're going to see that the image these enemies are sitting above it as you'll see and as you saw in the original game the enemies stay above the white so i'm going to that back off and then we have the bomb well the bomb is only used for bomb man and the bomb i have sitting right here but it's hidden until unless he's selected and then it comes into the scene and plays, takes a part in the animation. So this is the bomb. Here's the position for it and the scale for it. It uses a sprite renderer. I got it on layer order five. The enemies are all, all on layer order 10. The Wiley ship has different layers because the bottom needs to be above Wiley, but the top needs to be above the bottom. So you see all that. The rigid body, so they're all dynamic. The bomb is dynamic. When I get to the enemies, they're all dynamic as well. We don't use chat, worry about collision detection or the sleeping mode, and we do freeze all the constraints. And we don't worry about the collision because they're not colliding with anything. What I'm doing is I'm checking their Y coordinate, and once they get to that negative 16, which is basically roughly like around this area, if they go below that, I move them back up to negative 16 and lock them back into place so they never go below it. So that's the whole trick with their anim intro animation. And then we have just a group for the blocks themselves and a canvas group for them. So if I want to turn all the blocks on and off, I just set that to zero. So that'll hide them all. So when you select that enemy, it hides all the blocks. 
And so all the blocks are basically just composed of there's Cutman's block, and all it is is the image. And then you have Gutman, Gutsman's block, and these are all the positions. Iceman's block, Bombman's block, Fireman's block, Electman's block. And then you have Dr. Wiley's block, which is actually hidden initially, but it's right there in the middle. And the way I came up with all this is actually I took a screenshot and dropped in a new, I dropped it in here as an image and I moved everything into place. So that's where I got all the positioning. So it should match up with the game. So that's how I was able to figure out where all these blocks go. So you screenshot that, you screenshot that, um, that um, graphic from the actual game. Now the enemies, the enemies are composed of, it's, this is just another group of them. It doesn't, that doesn't play any part in anything. You have Cutman, which has the animation obviously tied to it, and there he is up there. And he's got a scale of negative 150, which basically means that he's, all of their graphics are left, they all face left. So we want him to face right, so we change the scale to negative 150. And this is his position. He has an animator tied to it with his um, his animator. And then you, I just default him his sprite renderer to the idle. And like I said, all these enemies are on layer order 10. And they all have rigid bodies that are all dynamic. And don't worry about the collision detection of the sleeping mode. And they're all locked into place. So, so that's Cutman. And you have Gutsman. That's, here's his positioning. Now he doesn't have negative 150 because he's facing left. So you don't have to like invert his left scale to make him um, sprite flip. And here's his um, sprite render, which is on defaults on his idle. And same thing with the rigid body. There's Iceman, those are his position, his, or his coordinates, and he's defaulted to idle. There's his animator, layer 10, and these are all basically the same for all these guys. So they're all on their idle, they're all on layer order 10, and they all have uh, rigid body 2D attached. Um, there's no box collider because they don't collide with anything, so I don't have to worry about that. I just need the physics to be able to launch them to do their thing with their animation. and. So these are all the settings for that. So I'm just going to look. So the rest of these are all basically the same. Now you're going to see here Bombman's missing his offset. That's because he doesn't have his box collider on this one. This is a different copy of him just for this scene. So these don't play any part. They're yellow. It doesn't matter. It's okay. It doesn't break anything. But this is his location. And then you have Fireman. That's his location. And then you have Electman. That's his location. And here's Dr. Wiley, which is in the center, and if you unhide him, there he is right there. So, and then this is all his settings. And this is all the same stuff. So that's the enemies. Then you have Dr. Wiley's ship, which I actually have sitting over here to the left. And if you actually activate the blue bar, and then you activate the ship, you're going to see... That's kind of like right there at the top of the blue bar. So if you watch the video from the original game, it's pretty close. It's pretty close to that location. So we're going to turn off Wiley's ship. So Wiley's ship's going to come in following those waypoints, which we'll get to the waypoints in a sec. And the blue bar, we're going to turn that back off. And then we have the group, which is basically composed of this is the top. We just turn this back on real quick. There's the top of the ship, and then there's the bottom of the ship. So, but we don't use the bottom. I don't use the bottom because the animation for the loading and the blinking have the bottom and Dr. Wiley integrated already into it. So I don't end up using the bottom. If I ever want to use the bottom and I didn't have Dr. Wiley in it, then yeah, there it is. I already have it. But there's no part of the animations in this uses that where it's empty. Because when it's lifting up, it shows Dr. Wiley behind it and stuff like that. So then we're going to turn that back off. And then we have the select text. The select text is basically this text in the middle here. And this is the position for it. It's anchored to the center, etc. And so it fills in. It's got this string format here I was talking about. So this is the font size. That's the font color. And let's set the mono spacing. And we use Text Mesh Pro for that. Clear points, uh, which are not enabled right yet, but basically it'll say the enemy name and it'll say clear points. So this is what gets teletyped, typewritered onto the screen. We'll get to that when we get to the script. 
And then the points tally, which is basically how many points you're going to get for that enemy. And it's randomly picked. So it's never consistent. If you play the game, it's always somewhere between 50,000 to 100,000. So it's either 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, or if you're lucky, you get the 100,000. But when it rotates through the text and it does the animated pick for the, um, for the points, it always truncates off the one from the 100, um, from the 100,000 and it shows the, the um, five zeros to stay in um, line with the others. So we'll get to that too. Now the waypoints for Wiley's ship. So these little waypoints. So I got these little orange or green, lime, green spots here. And this is the waypoint image so I can see where the waypoints are. Um, so here's the waypoint. This is the first waypoint. So the ship basically starts here. It's going to follow. It's going move to move along this path to this point here. And then this is going to go down to this point. This is the landing. It's going to stop there. And then it's going to go back up to this point, And then it's going to exit onto this point. So these are all the points. So you got that point. That's the second point. Then you got that point, and you have this point, and then this is the last point. And I was watching over here, all those are the different points. And so now we can turn that off. So that's basically the scene, the construction of the scene itself. So now we're going to go and take a look at the actual code. And it is a really big script, just to let you know. So I'm going to go in here, and then we're going to open up Sage Select. So first thing I do, I import text mesh pro object because we need that. And then to create the animated storyline, we usually always have a start time and a run time, but we also have a thing here called this time because some of the animations require a secondary offset to figure out where to play from. So that's where this, this time comes in. Um, called next scene, nothing new there. We use this to know only call the scene once so it doesn't repeatedly do it over and over. We only want it to be able to do it one time. So otherwise we get errors. Um, animation timer, which has to do with playing the animations um, or the flashing between the text and the block and everything. And then you got the max enemy blocks. So this actually should be about seven of them because Dr. Wiley is the last one. Otherwise it's zero through five, so zero waste index. Then we have a flag here. Um, flag here is white. And this is basically to toggle between the white or the blue. So this is this is basically used in conjunction with the timer. Then we have a bunch of Dr. Wiley stuff. So we're gonna have a bool here that says play Dr. Wiley. So if it's true, we should know that, oh, okay, Dr. Wiley should be visible on the screen, etc. Then we have a position where we're gonna capture the position of where the top of the ship is. And we need that because we're gonna be able to move it up and down. And the closing position Y, which basically is, uh, we'll get to this, but this is, um, we're gonna capture where the Y is originally. We're gonna move it to this location and then we're gonna move it back to here. So that's the whole moving up and coming back down part. And then this is the speed for when the ship is flying in. And what I do is the land speed is actually a little bit slower than the fly speed by half, at least for my version, theirs is maybe a little, not quite half, but it's going to fly in at 100, it's going to descend to 50, it's going to ascend to 50, and then it's going to leave back at 100. And this is the speed that we're going to use for moving the top up and down. And so, top of the ship that is. And here we have the animation states for Dr. Wiley's second animation. So this is when he's hailing his ship. This is when the ship starts coming in. This is when the ship starts opening, when the lid goes up. And we're going to have Wiley getting into the ship, Wiley blinking, the ship closing, the lid coming back down, or the top of the ship coming back down, and the ship leaving. These are all the states for his secondary animation. And basically here is the, um, this is where we're going to be able to track it through this variable here. Waypoint index, this has to do with the, um, the flight path of the ship. And originally it was for my first version of this take on the stage select. It was also for all their jumps and everything, but that didn't work out. But now it's just for the ship. And animation step, this is to prevent time overlaps and things like that. We'll get to that when we look at a couple of the um, animations for the enemies. And then this is the original position. We need to capture where the bomb is on screen because we need the Y. 
So when the bomb gets tossed up, we need to see when it comes back down. We don't want to go below that Y again or lock it back into place. So that has to do with bomb. This is purely for bomb man, his animation. And then we're going to capture, we're going to randomly pick how many points the level is for or the stage is going to be for. And it'll be picked out of this and it's going to be stored there. That's the value that'll be stored and it'll be passed over to the game manager. And so we have the 50, the 60, the 70, 80, 90, and the 100. And when it you actually step through the animation, it plays each of these one by one. Um, but when it gets to this one, it truncates it so you just have the zeros so it doesn't stretch out. So that's how they um, do their the point tally. Now we have scene settings, which enemy is selected, the flash. I already went over these earlier. So these are the timings and the movement speeds for certain things. The audio clips, which were, which were assigned to the um, inspector, to the um, script. And then all these objects, which are assigned through the script. You can just drag them over and populate. Then all the characters, all the blocks, and then the different other blocks. The for the actually these are the sprites of the blocks. You got the blue, the active blue, which is basically the yellow blue, the yellow white, the black blue, and the black white. Because you can play the enemy again, even though they've been defeated. And then these are the waypoints for each of um, um, the ships um, for the ship's animation path or where it's flying. And then these are all the vectors for the jumps. So I've already I basically calculated all these things out, you know, trial and error, getting them to work, so eyeballing the video, you know, fiddling with these. So these are the numbers that are good for 169 aspect ratio with orthographic projection of 1.2. If you change this or you change this, nothing's going to line up anymore. So these will change when I do my last video for the bomb man stage because we're going to select bomb man and he's going to do his animation. It's going to be 4.3 resolution with the Oracle graphic 1.2. And then this is the text mesh pro stuff. So are the, the hex colors for white and blue. And then the handle for the select text, the handle to the clear points and the handle to the points tally. And then these are the string formats for each. So they select stage, press enter. And then this is the um, enemy name, clear points. And then the actual points as it's you know doing its animation part, and then these are the scene states. So we start out at the scene selection once it's or the enemy selection or stage selection, whatever you want to call it. I call it enemy selection. So you select the enemy once it gets out of that, then it goes to their animation, and then if it's Doctor Wiley, then it goes to the exit animation. But if it's not Doctor Wiley and it's one of these, then it goes to here. But if it's Doctor Wiley, then it goes to here. So this will go to here, and then that will go to there. So. All points end at the very at the next scene, and then we start out at enemy selection. In the awake, we have a whole bunch of stuff here to initialize. This is all. This is basically we set up the the time to flash between the blocks, and this block is actually also for the text and the stage select text flash because they're in sync. And this is the stuff for Dr. Wiley. So by default, we're just going to assume Dr. Wiley is playable just to get all this stuff set up. So we freeze all, we freeze him on screen, um, set his block active, and um, et cetera. This is the sprite. We set the sprite on the image, so it should be the yellow blue by default. And then we're going to hide all these things out through the inspector. I already have them turned off, but just in case, we'll make sure the bomb's turned off. We make sure the Wiley ship is turned off, the group and the bottom for sure. So the group will turn both of them off, but we purposely also make sure the ship bottom is turned on because we don't use it. We don't want it to come visible at all. So even if you turn the group back on, the bottom will still be turned off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure all that the blue bar and the white flash are turned off so the alpha on those is zero so they're not on and then we're going to initialize the select text with the format string format so we pass it the font size and we start it at blue and then we're going to turn it off because dr white is saying we're prepping this for dr wiley but we're just going to set that string up because so we don't have to do it later we want to do it in a week because there is a case where if you do it in start you could see the string format before it gets filled in. So we want to do it in a wake before start, before the screen updates. 
and let's see here clear points make sure that's turned off and to point tally make sure that's turned off so that's in the awake now inside of the start we're just going to go through all enemies up to a luck man so that's not including dr wiley so what we're going to do here is we're going to set all of their animation speeds to zero so when the scene starts they shouldn't be playing our animation they should all be stuck on their idle frame and then we're going to make sure that they should all be you know, frozen on the screen which they should be already but just in case and inside of here we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to check our game manager that game stages thing to see if the level's been completed if the level has been completed, then we're going to use the black version instead of the blue version. And if it happens to be selected, that the enemy selection, which is basically which enemy we're on, the current selection, will set that to white. But otherwise, it should be blue. But if the level is not completed, then we're going to start with the active version but blue but if it's the enemy that's selected then it'll be the white one instead we're going to turn off dr wiley we're going to say the maximum number of blocks is actually up to a man not to up to dr wiley we're going to turn off dr wiley's character and we're going to turn off his blocks to make those hidden because the text which is here we're going to show the text instead the stage select text and we're going to do the string format we're going to set it to white we're gonna, because that's going to be the default for whatever selected, going to start at white. And then we're going to play the music. Set the volume, set the music clip, and then when it's already defaulting to true, to, um, to loop it. Now inside of the update, we're going to see what scene state that we're on. And if we're on enemy selection, we're going to call this function enemy selection. And let's just go jump down to there. In enemy selection, what we're going to do is we're going to look for the right arrow being pressed, the left arrow being pressed, and the return key being pressed. If the right arrow is pressed, we're going to check and see if our, we're going to increment our enemy selection. We're going to see if it's beyond or equal to the maximum number of blocks. So it's either up to elect man or it's up to Dr. Wiley. And if it's going up beyond that, we're going to set it back to zero. So we've done this before. This is very similar to how we're able to select in um, the game over when we're switching between the game over options so this is just like a way to keep track of you know which selection you're on so and then the only difference is you're going to update it well also with the um what was that thing called the uh the weapons menu it's a very similar it's a very similar concept so you're going to keep track of which one you're on and based off which one you're on you're going to update certain things on the screen so in that case we wrap it around back to zero because we hit, we'll just assume a lek man, and then it'll go back up to cut man. And we're going to update all the blocks and text, reset the timer, and play that music clip. So it's basically selecting between them. Here's the same thing, except it's all the same, except in this case, if we go press the left arrow, it's going to decrement. And then if it decrements, then what we're going to do is we're going to set it to the maximum number of blocks. So it wraps around. So it's always going to be constantly wrapping around whichever direction you go when you're selecting. And if you hit enter, we're going to capture our start time because this is when the animation stuff's going to happen. We're going to pick our random um, points that we're going to be using for this stage. And then we're going to change our scene state to the intro animation. Now, while this loop is happening inside of here, this is all happening within the update loop, uh, we're going to basically decrement our animation timer and then we're going to flash enemy block and text so this is what causes the flash in between the blue and the white so now down here update enemy block and text all this is going to basically do is you know go through each block we're going to switch between the blue or the white or in this case the blue if it's an inactive blue which is the black one or the active blue which is the yellow one and if it happens to be Dr. Wiley, he should always be active. Dr. Wiley doesn't have a black version because if you defeat Dr. Wiley, basically the game's over. So there's no black block for Dr. Wiley. And down here, we're going to check and see if it's white. And you can basically figure this out. This is if it's Dr. Wiley, it's going to be active and white. And if we're not, if it's not Dr. Wiley, then we're going to update the text instead of using the block, you know, updating his block. 
and we're just going to basically pick out which sprite we're going to use to update the image component because this is a canvas item so it uses the image not sprite but it's a sprite of the image and then down here we're going to flash the block in the text so here we're just going to toggle white it's either going to be on or it's going to be off we're going to figure out which blue block, um, block which blue block we're going to use either it's going to be the black version or the yellow version same with the white it's either going to be the black version or the white version and then we're going to set it over here if it's white we're going to use we're going to set the white block or the blue block if it's not on white so we're flashing white or we're not flashing white and then down here same thing we're going to basically if it's white then we want the active white but if it's not white then it's going to be the active blue and otherwise if there's no that's for dr wiley and not dr wiley then it's going to be white string for stage select or blue string for stage select and then we reset the timer so this thing happens over and over and over flashing between the blue and the white the blue and the white same thing with the block blue block the white block and it's either the blue active block or the white active block or, or the black inactive block or the black or the white inactive block so it just depends what the state is so this is the first part of the loop that's in the update the next part let's assume okay we select our enemy now we're going to go to the intro animation so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to always be checking the runtime we need to know the runtime for our animations so at this point 001 what we're going to do is we're going to do these things one time we're going to start a co-routine to flash the screen the white screen and we're also going to prepare the um, animated intro to prepare the animated intro let's see what else we have here anyway we'll just we'll get to these parts um, after those are done then what we're going to do from the runtime on up to about 3.2 seconds or so we're going to run through this and play enemy animations and then each this function basically has a function for each of the enemies their own animations and it's going to see if it's that's the enemy is selected then that code for that enemy will play and then what we're going to do is once it gets beyond there we're going to play the score animation that's basically going to do the typewriter text and the score animation and then when we get down here towards a roughly about 7.5 seconds what we're going to do is we're going to see is it dr wiley is that the one we're playing if it is then we're going to go to the exit animation and we're going to recapture the start time because he has a we're just going to reset the start time and then what we're going to do is if it's not dr wiley that's picked then we're just going to go to the next scene and then on the exit animation, this is like Dr. Wiley's animation, calculate the runtime, and then we're going to do his animation and this function here. And if we get to the next scene, all it's going to do is it's going to pass to the game manager how many score points this, um, that we chose for the next scene, and then it's going to say, hey, go start that scene. Okay. So here we're going to get, um, these are functions that have to do with getting the enemy name. So based off the the integer value of the stage will get the name place basically converting the enum from the stages list and returning it or if you pass it the stages list they'll get the string version so it's so the same overloaded function two different ways of doing it picking random points if it's dr wiley dr wiley basically is always 200,000 points but you don't get those 200,000 points until you defeat his last stage so but this is what's going to be showed on the screen is the 200,000. Otherwise, it's a random stage point between that 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, or 100,000. So we're going to get the random from that array and pass it back from this function. We already talked about that. We already talked about that. We already talked about that. Now prepare in animated intro. To prepare the animated intro, basically that's going into the animation. We're going to set the animation step to zero, even though we set it to one later. We're just going to reset it because um, we some we use this in the um, animations for the enemies to to make sure there's no overlap on the timeline and all that. Um, we're going to hide all the blocks, so we're going to hide all the blocks. But and then the enemies, we're going to um, hide all the enemies except for the one we're selected. So all the enemies are going to be hidden except the one that we selected. So that one will stay on the screen. So, so imagine all the blocks are gone now, So and we have the one enemy. So the screen's all blue, and we've got the one enemy. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hide 
the sock text, now that's gone. We're going to bring in the blue bar. So now we got the blue bar of the enemy and the blue background. And we're going to play the boss, this boss selection music and the game start clip sound that you basically hit enter or whatever. And then down here is the flashing of the white screen. So it basically runs five times. We just toggle the alpha on the um, canvas group for that game object. That's it. And then the play enemy animation. So each enemy is animation is broken into its own functions so we can separate it out. It's easier to keep track of what's going on instead of one big giant function. So here's everybody's animations functions. And then we got Dr. Wiley, his first part, because he's got a second one. So let's talk about Cutman. Cutman's animation. So what we're gonna do is make sure if our, so like this, these are all playing in the update loop. However, they're not going to execute in their contents inside unless the enemy selection is matching the stage that was selected. So if the enemy selection that we picked is equal to Cutman's value, then that's what's going to execute in here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to start off on frame number two, so that's the jump frame. And then we're going to change the constraints. We're going to freeze the rotation, so that means the X and the Y are now available to, so he can move around and there were the velocity we're going to apply his jump vector and all those are that's an array up at the top so cut man's index is zero so in here and then we're going to set the animation step to one so from 0 0.001 up to up through three seconds and if this is equal to one it's going to execute this part here so what we're going to look for is if his velocity of y is less than or equal to zero, which basically means he's basically he's got he's coming down. If he's going up, his y is, his y velocity is actually positive. So that means he's coming down from his animation. So that needs to be we want to make sure he's coming down. And if he as he comes down, his local position of y is lower than that negative 16 value, then this is going to execute. So we know he did his jump. He's coming back down. He's now below number. He's below the landing of y, which is negative 16, so we're going to execute this. So what we're going to do is we're going to put him back at 16, we're going to lock him at that split on the screen at that spot, and then we're going to play out the rest of his animation where he does his, you know, scissor-looking thing. And we just set this to 2 even though there is no number 2. So there isn't one for him, so there's no next step. So this is where it ends for him. So that's how Cutman's animation is played. Next one we're going to do is Guts Man. So I'm not going to go over every one of these, each one of these, because they're all very similar. But this guy's a little bit different. So same concept. It's going to prep him. It's going to start off on frame number two, freeze. It's going to freeze everything, or unfreeze everything but the rotation. Apply his jump vector, so he's going to jump. He's going to come down. Hold on one sec. Sorry about that. Okay, let's go back to that. And it's going to start on here, animation step one, same thing. We're going to look for when he goes below the Y, when it's coming down from the velocity. If it goes below that Y, we're going to lock him into place. We're going to, we're going to set up to that location. We're going to lock him into place. And in this case, we're going to flip him because he's facing left. Now we will need him to face right, so we're going to flip him. And then we're going to play his um, other animation, which is his landing. You know, he's landed. He's basically doing that kind of like that squat look. But somewhere in here, at this 0.01, we're going to have him do where his legs come down. So these two actually kind of go, go, go in hand in hand together, even though. So this is between these times, but at the 0.1 time, we're going to change his animation. So somewhere midstream of this, he's going to change the animation to this, which is his legs cut extended. Or when he lands, it's going to show he's doing that boom. He's landed, his legs are squatting, you know, he's squatting. And then down here in step two, what we're going to do is we're going to show frame number five. So this is where he starts chuckling, I believe. Uh, oh, this is where he stands up. So he stands up from his landing. And then we play the rest of his animation at this point. So this is where this, this time comes in. So once we land, we're going to capture the current runtime and store it in this value called this time. So what we'll do then is from runtime and it'll be this time, so at some point these are equal. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add on point 0.2. So point 0.2 added on to this time from runtime is going to play this animation. 
which is basically him standing up. And then at point seven, this, which is basically, this is basically point five later, like half a second later, it's going to play his, you know, his chuckle or his, you know, she's laughing his shoulder movement animation. So that's how I do Guts Man. Iceman simple. He basically, you know, he jumps when he lands. That shouldn't be there. And he lands. We flip him, and then he does his little arm thing, and he and he plays the rest of his animation out. So. Bomb man, he's a little bit difficult um, because of the bomb, but it's actually kind of simple. Um, same thing, he's gonna launch up, he's gonna come down. Once he comes down, we're gonna you know, freeze him on screen, we're gonna flip him, we're gonna put his animation at this point, which is frame number three, capture this time. And if it's set to animation step two, what we're gonna do is from this time, half a second in, we're gonna activate the bomb, we're going to capture its location, and then about 1.25 in, we're going to play the animation. So he's going to toss his bomb up. You know, we're going to toss the bomb up. We're going to apply a velocity to the bomb, so nothing on the X, and then two on the Y. And then about one, this is about 0.15 later, we're going to be looking for the bomb coming down so we can catch it. So when it's over this time, if the bomb comes down and it lows below the, y, the original Y, we're going to set the bomb down location and we're going to freeze it. So that's the whole bomb catching animation part. Fireman, it's very same. He's got 12 frames. Um, he jumps. But this guy just goes straight up and he comes down. So he doesn't have action. You have X velocity. And then here... When he lands, we just play out the rest of his animations. Just like Cut Man, it's very simple. Elect Man, um, kind of similar, except he, I do a little creative liberty with his um, cha 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 with his arms movement. And he jumps up, he lands, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to uh, freeze him. We're going to play the one frame. Which I'm not sure which that's the land he's landed. And this is where he throws his arm up once, and then about 0.2 seconds later, then I play the rest of his animation. So I believe the original just plays it through all the way through, but I throw an arm up, I wait, and then I do his arm movement again. So a little bit different than the original. Now Dr. Wiley, it's just like Cutman. So he just jumps, he lands. And we flip him, and then we move on to the um, then we move on to the next part. So after Wiley plays, then it would play Wiley animation too. Now this is very very um, entailed here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hide one, the the beginning of his second animation. What we're going to do is we're going to hide the clear points, hide the points tally, we're going to flip them around. So he's facing right right now, but we're going to have him face left. And we're going to set the speed to 1, and then we're going to play from this point in his animation. And this is basically where he's going to start hailing the ship. So this preps it, and now we're going to move on to hailing the ship. So that's going to be from overtime, from point 1 and on. So if he's hailing the ship, so what we're going to do is we're going to check the normalized time on the animation, and once it's greater than 1.14, which basically means it's the end of his animation, that's when we're going to say, okay, now we want the ship to start coming in. So we need to make sure the waypoint index for those transforms is zero. We're going to change the animation move speed for the flying for the flying speed for the ship. And then we're going to have um, he's going to stop. He's just going to stand there and be white waiting for his ship. We're going to activate the ship. We're going to capture this time so we can use it, and then we're going to start playing the UFO clip. Now, and when the ship starts coming in, we're going to check um, for the first two waypoints. Uh, well, 0, 1, 2, so the first three waypoints. So he's going to start at 0, which is basically where it starts on the far left, come to 1, which is um, right above him, and then the second one's going to be down here. It's going to land up above him. 
So we're going to basically do a move towards through each of these wave points until we finally reach the waypoint that we're looking at. Now when we get to waypoint index 2, that's when we change the move speed so that we want the when the ship lands to be a little bit slower than when it's flying in. And then when we get the waypoint index 3, we're going to activate the group. We're going to set the Wiley ship animation speed to 0. We're going to move the group to wherever the ship is right now and going to capture the position of the top of the ship and we're going to get the closing line because wherever the ship's the top of the ship is right now that's where we want it to end up closing at the same spot so we're going to capture that y and then we're going to change the y to where we want it to open to and then we're going to hide dr wiley because right now the ship should be sitting on top of him so we're going to hide him he's behind the ship right now and that's where those other groups of animations for the loading and the blinking because those already have Dr. Wiley in them. So that's where we're gonna that's where Dr. Wiley is gonna be. So the original Dr. Wiley sprite is not gonna be on the screen anymore. Game option. And then we're gonna play the loading. And then we're gonna move to the open ship. So now the ship is gonna start opening. So now the top of the um, ship is gonna start moving through the um, it's gonna change the Y position on it. So it's gonna start opening up while the other animation is playing for the loading. Well, actually, it's going to load up. He's going to get in. So that's where Load Wiley comes in. So when the ship, when the top of the ship is done moving to where we want it to, then we're going to go to the Load Wiley 1. So then what we're going to do is we're going to be looking for the normalized time on 1.333. So we're going to check for the basically end of the animation. And so when it's at the end of that animation, then we're going to switch to the uh, next animation, which is basically Wiley blinking. It's identical, it looks exactly the same, except now he's going to be blinking. So then we're going to switch to Wiley 2. So as he's blinking, we're going to run it for 1.1332, and when it gets to that point, then we're going to change it to the closed ship. So he's blinking up to this time, and then we're going to close, start closing the ship on him. So now we're going to basically move the Y of the top of the ship back down. So then we're moving it down, and we're going to hide Dr. Wiley, and going to disable the ship group, put the ship back to the original, you know, animated Wiley ship where it's closed up, and we're going to switch to outgoing. So now we're going to fly out. So now the rest of the waypoints, now the waypoint index hasn't changed. It should still be at three. So now three through six, three through five. So it's going to go up and then it's going to fly out. So we're going to move through those waypoints. And when it gets to index four, we're going to change the animation move speed to the fly speed. So when it gets up to this point here, it's going to now be fast when it flies out. And then we're going to switch to the next scene. And so that is the animation for Dr. Wiley. Now, I should have probably jumped down here to some of this, this one, because this actually has to do with the, anim the play score animation. So, play score animation is we get the enemy name, so that's where that get enemy name function was above, because that's going to be basically tacked onto this um, clear point. So, it's going to say, like, for instance, cut man, next line, new line, new line, clear points, you know, because we're going to typewriter text that out. So the typewriter text it out, what we're going to do is we're going to get each character and then we're going to save that in a new string. So we're going to take the character, put it in a new string, and then we're going to format it with the um, font size. We're going to make sure it's white and we're going to basically fill that in. And then what we're going to look for, is it a new line character or a space? If it's a new line character, if it's not a new line and it's not a space, then what we're going to do is we're going to do a delay. So we're going to, this is a coroutine. It's going to basically loop, right? So it's going to say, it's going to play at the C. And it's going to wait. And then it's going to put, then it's going to find the next character, which is the U. For we're saying cut man, for instance. And it's going to wait. So it's going to go C, U, T, M, A, N. And it's going to not, it's not going to pause on new lines or spaces. And then it's going to say, C L E A R for clear, no no waiting between for that space between and then points. So it's going to basically typewriter that text out, you know, with a little bit of a delay, 
And then when it gets past the typewriter text part, then we're going to do the actual the store the score tally part with whatever um, points that we selected. So that is we basically loop we loop the um, the, um, the iterations for how many times we show the loop through the um, through the points eight times roughly. Actually, it's not roughly, it is eight times. And then we play the tally loop. This is where we got it from the asset called Gallery Game Manager. That's why we made it public. And then this is a string format for it. So it's going to say 50,000, 60, 70, 000, 80, 000, 90, 000. 100,000 is going to be showing as zero. So that's where this is down here. So if it happens to be 100,000, we're going to set to zero. The string format will prepend all those extra zeros in there. And we're going to basically do the each iteration of that loop 0 0.001, so it's pretty quick. So then if we get here, if it's greater than or equal to it, we're going to trim. We're going to trim the points, and then we're going to display it on the screen. So the trim was because in the beginning you have, there's an indent. So there's an indent here so that when you're looking at clear the enemy name and clear points, there's actually one missing character here. So that if it's 50, 60, 70, there's like a one, there's a space before it. But if you happen to hit the 100,000, we don't want the space in front of the 100,000. So that's where it's going to trim it. So if it happens to be 100,000 or the 200,000 for Dr. Wiley, it's going to trim our format string here and remove the space and then display the final score. And then the point play the last clip, which is the point tally where it's the end sound. So instead of a da 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 and it's a really, actually, I, I had a lot of fun building this out because it's um, it's probably one of the most um, detailed parts of this whole series, I think, was doing this this screen here because it's just, I don't know, in my, in my opinion, I think it's really cool. So I'm going to play it again because I like watching it. So now that everything's in there, we have Cutman. We can switch between all these guys. I'm going to hit Cutman. He jumps and he does his animation and it plays his clip. So, and then we go into the next scene, and in this case, there is no scene. So, because we have to add those in. I forgot about that. So, we have all these the stage side, but we don't have the actual other scenes. So, these are all placeholders anyway. So, we're going to drop in those scenes. So, the stages. So there, those are all the stages. And if you wanted to keep this a certain way, you can bring him down, bring those down there. So you got Dr. Wiley. So originally you start with it's cut man if you're going to go and sequence. So it's cut man, guts man, then it was ice man. Bomb man, fireman, elect man, etc. So now we play it again. We're gonna do guts man. Jumps in, he does his chuckle. That's the typewriter text, and then the animated score. And then it would go into that scene. If we do ice man. Plays his animation. He got the hundred thousand. So let me. We're gonna do Bomb Man. So I want you to see what I'm talking about. So where we're basically there's a space between the score while it's tallying up, and if it happens to be a hundred thousand or more, then it removes that space and it lines up with the rest of the text. So right now, it's gonna play it. And you see, there's a space there. Well, if it becomes 100,000, 
that space will go away because it gets trimmed out. Fireman. And then we'll do a lock man. Now, on the game manager, so like I'm saying you have these are the active colors. The yellow is means active. These stages have not been completed. Let's assume all right, we just beat cut man. Let's get that function, that public function, the game manager set level completed, gets called, sets this to true. Now if we go back to the stage select screen. Now you can see it's black. The stage has been completed. It's still flashing. We can still go into it again if we want, but the black basically signifies that the level is done. You're done with that level. So, so I'm going to go over here back to Gutsman. Do, do, do. I'm going to pretend that I went in there. I just beat that guy's level. So I'm going to get all the way through here. Let's assume they're all beaten. So now the stage select text is gone and Dr. Wiley is there. So max blocks, which was six, now should be seven. Because if I press left, it jumps to Dr. Wiley. And it's going to go around and around and around. This way with pressing the right arrow. See there. So I'm going to go Dr. Wiley. I'm going to play his. So now it's going to jump into Dr. Wiley animation part two. He's hailing a ship, his ship starts flying in, and it's going to go slower, landing on top of him. That's the loading animation. Now it's going to play the blinking animation while the top comes down and it goes back up and it flies up. So that is his animation. So anyway, that brings us to the end of the video. Now this one's a really long one, a really tough one, um, and it's probably best if you go and download the project and then you can just inspect the code and see how I did it. And if you have any questions, you can ask. Um, I didn't want to try to go into all the code like in too much details. I mean, you can see it was, I like really commented it out. I mean, there's tons of comments in there to try and explain, you know, what's going on and everything. So probably it would have been about 700 or 800 lines of code and the rest are all comments. So. Okay, so that brings us to the end. So if you found this video useful, you learned anything from it, you know, give it a like. I always appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed to the series, um, subscribe to my channel. So next video, um, I think, is going to be Adhering Susie. It's going to be an enemy. So catch you in the next video. Bye.